Okay, working with decibels in acoustics. This is the final part, the fourth part of this complete series and I will show you how to work with professional software on recordings of decibels or acoustic measurement at all. Uh, we have done in the last video on the third part a simple measurement, me singing. Ma, ma. And I will show you what the decibel values will be and you will learn how to display them in diagrams and show you this typical analysis we use and furthermore, not just looking at the decibel value, also look in the frequency to analyze the object and get attack the problem that you get. You will learn a lot. To get hold of the data, we just connect the device via USB to our laptop. Dun, dun, dun. And we said we want to use this as an SD card. Okay. Now I can browse here and see there is my scoreboard. And I did this on FO, what's my folder? Scoreboard Office Test number five. Just drag drop it to my workspace and boom, I got a result. <laughs> that easy. What the hell do I see here is the first question. And the easiest check is if you just play back. Because we have time recording, we can re-listen to the file again. So I press play. Ma. First time, to be me speaking. Ma. And me a little bit louder. If you remember, if I didn't say anything, the level drops down to 50 decibel. Now I can have it on record, not just on a changing diagram. Now I have it forever fixed. Huh? And the first time I was yelling, let me count, take a data cursor here. I'm here about 8990 decibels. And then I try to be double as loud. Double as loud means rule of thumb. 10 decibels higher, so it should be 100. Let me see on top, we got down here and we are here 100, 101 is a little bit higher. Not that bad on the first try. I completely underpaid. But let's check if it was really double as loud, seems to be a bit a little higher, 103. Mm -hmm. So I can change from level versus time to loudness versus time, which gives me the native scaling for human perception. There we go. Bam, there we are. First yelling is, let me see here. Here we have 65, so double as loud would be 130. It's 135, 130, yeah, I'm quite good. Now let's check if all the brace going I told you before on paper will also work in the software. It gives you the base to be a good acoustic engineer. So we go back on level versus time. What do you see here? The level drops down to 50 decibels if I didn't say anything. This is quite confusing, yes. Um, this is a, just a normal dB scaling and a lot of people use dBA or dBC scaling. This is um, something from the old times. According to a microphone is obviously different than according of this anatomic ear. There are some effects which a microphone does not have. And awaiting is a simple filter approach to give this a chance. <laughs> so we activate this on spectral weighting a or C, here I just take A weighting, because it's the common one. And you see the level is, has changed now. It's, it's not 50, now it's 40, uh, because the lowest frequency which are in the building, coming from the street outside or from the air fan here, something I don't hear anymore, but it's in there and this can be dropped down more to what I perceive. Using the time data, I'm now able to focus, maybe on my first yelling here, just make some curtains and say, this area I want to have an average. So I calculate this area and if I ask for that average level, it's 86. Let's remind if we extend now for the double of the time, it was two seconds here, if I just double the time and there was almost silent and recalc again, remind 86 dropped to 83. Remember, double the size with no more input, it will drop only three decibel. Is it right? It's not just a strange thing for you because you have learned it in all other ways before you realize and understand it. Okay, you get in, it gives you strength. Let's check this also here. If I just focus on this area and calculate my second one, this was 103.85. And if I double the length of the analysis, so like this and recalculate, it drops exactly three decibel, okay? Got it. But having time data available gives you even more chance to attack your problem. Where is the loud noise? Let's take the full recording again. And I'm going for analysis, typical FFT versus time. Here we have more detailed information. What frequency causes the level peak? 
at this point. So in the color tells me now which frequency is dominated at this moment here in time. Here we see frequency from 50 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. And as you see again, there is a logarithmic scaling. And this is really useful. Humans are always a relative thinking. If I have 100 hertz, I can divide 100 from 110 hertz. If I have the 1000 hertz, I'm not care about this is 1000 or 1010. And I care about this 1000 and 1100. 10% higher. In the 10 kilohertz, I not care about 10 kilohertz and 10,010 hertz or 100, and it's 10,000 or 11,000 hertz. So always where you are relatively, is there any change? So this gives me the way I'm able to hear. On low frequency, higher frequency resolution, on high frequency, you can bring this together because you're not able to divide. If I, of course, I'm able to say, I don't want a logarithmic scaling, I want to have linear scaling, and it would just <laughs> go down, but this is not the way I will hear, okay? So it's completely usual and so clever to always use a logarithmic scaling if you want to distinguish between frequencies. If I want to just concentrate from here to there and press play, forward, backward, Yeah, got it. Uh, let's zoom in. A lot of frequency in the same moment. It looks like a lot of noise sources are at the same time. The simple trick is check if there's a conjunction between the frequency. Right mouse click and go for Hamano cursor. And zoom it just down. You can see now we hit the frequency exactly. So this tells me it's double the time, four times the time, six times the time. All these noise you see coming from just one noise source. <laughs> okay, big help. If I want to raise the frequency resolution, I can just go here on the settings and say frequency resolution should be higher. And then I can see it much easier that these lines are just fitting perfectly on the point, okay? This is a harmonic effect, probably one noise source. As a final lesson, let's analyze a real measurement of a washing machine I made already. So there is a washing machine B, just drag drop it to my surface. And this is a full run, it's one and a half hour. And this is all the noise which will take place during this full cycle. And if you're in charge for the acoustic of a washing machine, you are highly interested to have a low decibel value for the machine for the full cycle run up. So here, instead of just having one value in the end of the full recording, now you can see the full recording when your decibel value will be going up. So looking at our DBA level for a full cycle, we can see here in the washing cycle, uh, we have quite a low level because we always can have the time to stop. We can see this is the time, it's about 55 decibel A, and you always have the time to stop break and then otherwise around. It helps everything to drop down a little bit, the level. But of course, if I go here on the point when I'm, I'm spinning, as you can hear and I can analyze it, now we have 60, 61 decibels, constant, and in the end, if I want to dry it by spinning at a really high speed, let's play it, constantly, 70 this will. The noise that is created here is just the movement of the clothes inside. So it's really depending on how, how full your washing machine is. If it's too much air inside, it's getting louder. But here on top are some, some high frequency content. Let's check this one here. What is that? Tick, tick, tick. There's a <laughs> part of your belt hitting the glass in front. But it is just this high frequency content from the metal. It's not here. Same moment and it's not in there. So instead of looking at the decibel value in the end of the full washing program and say, mm -hmm, it's a little bit high, I don't know what it is, maybe it is. On one view, you can see there's your problem. This is just an effect of my clothes I use. We shouldn't have a metal belt inside that just pitches up that much our level. All can see after one recording in detail. So you think about how can I drop my level for the full cycle, now you can be target oriented and not just digging in muddy water and hoping that you find some effects. Much easier. 
Now you've learned all the fundamentals you need to be an acoustic engineer. And with this background, you have the strength and the self-confidence to learn even more. And I say 15 years of being an acoustic engineer, it's a lot to learn, it's, but it's fun. Highly recommended to go that way, okay? If you have more questions, um, there is of course more to learn. I put some other videos already in there for special analysis up there or for another program. This is a beginner program, there's a more professional program for industry. So a quick start, how to work with that, okay? And if you have questions, just let me know. See you, bye.